I want to ask you a question as we began tonight. Have you ever heard someone say, all I need is Jesus? Have you uh, ever heard somebody say that? And then in your mind, you're like, wait, 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 wait. Have you ever thought that just isn't true? There's tension in the room right now because we're in church. You heard, you got, we sing songs about this, and we sing, all I need is you, Lord, right? And while we're singing, I, I sing it, and I say it because I just kind of feel like there's this bigger meaning from my heart, like he's the most important thing in my life, and I serve you greater than anything else, and kind of I get the big picture, but in real honest terminology, have you ever thought, like, that just isn't really true because I need food <laughs> and I need water yeah. and I need money, yeah. either mine or somebody else's, <laughs> and I need friendship and I need love. This, this song and, and the message that I want to connect it to is about what I'm going to call human hunger. Human hunger. And I want to start with the background of this song. Uh, if you know anything about the, the band themselves, then you know that there's, there's a guy named Edge. Edge is the guitarist, the singer alongside Bono. Uh, Bono wrote the song, and Edge did an interview I found years and years ago where he explained that the song was written as a gospel song, and that one of the first times, and you can go find this, it's really cool to watch, uh, before it was even really recorded, um, they heard about a, a choir, they got a cassette actually of a choir in a church in, in um, Harlem, New York City, and they got on airplanes, and they flew to Harlem, and they went in this little church, and that's when this song kind of broke loose into a sort of a trial sort of run. They sang it with a gospel choir backing them up. And, and, and so it, it's about longings. It's about searching for something. It's about looking for something. And I want to put up the words to some of the first verse. It says, I've climbed the highest mountains. I've run through the fields. I've kissed honey lips felt the healing in the fingertips. It burned like fire, this burning desire. I've spoke with the tongue of angels. I've held the hand of a devil, but I still haven't found what I'm looking for. I still haven't found what I'm looking for. Now, the tension in this song is that Bono is professing his faith in Christ, in the cross, in the coming kingdom, but he is also saying that he still has human hunger. So for Christians, uh, it has this, it, it has this odd tension around it. Let, let me show you what I mean when, uh, uh, let's read the words one more time. I believe in the kingdom come, then all the colors will bleed into one, bleed into one, but yes, I'm still running. You broke the bonds and you loosed the chains. You carried the cross of my shame. Oh, my shame, you know I believe it. You know I believe it. Isn't that, I want you to pause. I want you to listen to what he wrote here. Like, I believe this. Like, I believe you carried the cross. I believe you carried my shame. I believe it. Like, Bono is all out, all in, professing, confessing, and has for many years his faith in Christ. But then he says what nobody who is a Christian really wants to talk about, and that is that he says, I still haven't found what I'm looking for. Yeah. This is going to seem really counterintuitive to you if your idea of Christianity is that it would cure you of human hunger. And I'm going to really help some of you who are ready to be a little bit more um, mature. I'm going to help some of you who have had a conflict because of the way you grew up and you heard certain things that didn't quite make sense, and I'm going to help you with that. I'm going to help you if you're new to, to faith, and maybe you've always kind of wondered about some of the stuff I'm going to talk about this weekend. 
But I'm going to give you four things to remember, and we're just going to talk about human hunger. Four things to remember about human hunger. Number one is that hunger is a part of the human experience. It's likely that since I brought up that word, some of you have been reminded you didn't eat before service <laughs> and that you're hungry right now. Uh, maybe, in fact, some of you would realize that, you know, I am hungry every day and that I've been feeling hungry every day of my life. When you were born, one of the first things that you felt was hunger. You cried, you screamed till you got fed. Hunger is a reoccurring condition. How many times have you finished a meal and you thought, especially like Christmas, Thanksgiving, even Fourth of July, you just thought, I am never going to eat another bite. <laughs> I, I am so, and you get up from the table and then a few hours later you find yourself opening up the refrigerator door. Just scoping it out, seeing if there's any option. Anybody? Like, honest? Like, see, the most basic and familiar form of hunger is our hunger for food, but human hunger goes way beyond food. Let's just talk about some of the human hunger sex, love, power, companionship, progress. Understanding, I want to understand. Some of you, like, you really want to understand. Some people don't care to understand as much as other people. I just want, I want to know. You ask a lot of questions. You're hungry for approval, hungry for money, fame, family, significance, happiness, hungry. Hunger goes way beyond just the natural hunger for food. It's much broader than that, and it's just part of what we, what I'm calling human hunger, the, 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 the experience of being human. Number two, being hungry is part of being healthy. Being hungry is part of being healthy. When, when someone isn't hungry, they're not healthy. They need to see a doctor. They need to get their appetite back, right? Can we reason a little bit? Like if there's no appetite for sex, then there's no intimacy, no procreation, no reproduction, there's no children, there's no family. If there's no appetite for progress, then there's no vision for our lives, and without vision, people perish. Proverbs 16, 26 says, the appetite of the laborer works for them. Their hunger drives them on. Hunger moves you. Hunger motivates you. Hunger causes you to have a vision of a better future. God wants us to be part of what we would know as the creative process. And hunger is the basis of creativity. Hunger turns a barren field into a harvest field. Hunger starts with a tree and turns it into a house. Are, are you with me? Our, hungry is the, our, our hunger is the source of industry, ingenuity, creativity, I got to lay this foundation good because some of you have been, you've had an, uh, you had a problem with your hungers, like your hunger, you're against your hunger, you uh, you hate your hungers. You, I just want you to understand that God called, uh, uh, God created us with human hunger, and, and our hunger, our hunger is, is the source of. Every, of the chair you're sitting in. It's the, the source of the building that we have right now. Someone was hungry for a better life, and you're enjoying it right now. The phone that you talk on, the technology that you have, it came out of someone who was hungry for something better in the world of communication. The car that you drive, the house you live in, the plane you fly on, God made man hungry, and being hungry is part of being healthy. 
Come on, somebody ought to clap like right now. You know, I got it, I got it, I got it. I'm getting it, I'm getting it, I'm getting it. Third thing, the way you manage human hunger will determine the direction and quality of your life. So if you allow your hunger to take you in the wrong direction, then you do what we would call missing the mark. If, maybe you're not aware of this, that the word sin uh, in the Greek, it's, the, it's a picture, a word picture of an, it's of an archer shooting an arrow, mi missing the mark. So that might help you to just understand that this concept is that when, when you are when you don't manage your hunger well, you miss the mark. You miss God's best for your life. When it comes to your human experience, Jesus didn't come. Hear me, everybody. When it comes to your human experience, Jesus did not come to eliminate but to elevate. He came to give you the best human experience possible. He came to give life. I said he came to give life, and that more abundant. He said that. He said the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. That's your enemy. He comes to, he comes to mess up your life and destroy your life. But I have come, Jesus says, that you might have life, and that you might have it to the full, and that your human experience would be the best possible on this side of heaven. That, that your, your, your best life would be experienced because I'm guiding you, I'm helping you, I'm with you, I'm for you. You see, your best life is when you live life God's way. And the Bible gives us instructions for our lives so, so that they can be the most fulfilling life and rewarding life possible this side of heaven. But unmanaged hunger is a problem. Unmanaged hunger, let's just talk about the, the, the food part of it. Unmanaged hunger adds weight, adds pressure. Your doctor's going to tell you, knock it off. You're going you're, you're gonna to end your life prematurely. Unmanaged hunger creates greed, causes addictions. And if we, some of you, are, you, you grew up in a home where there was unmanaged hunger and You've, all your life you've struggled with the idea that you were abandoned or that dad wasn't around and you look back at it and maybe now as, you, as I talk and maybe as you've come to terms with things, you realize the power of an unmanaged hunger. Like you wonder, why would dad leave? Why would dad? But there's addictions and there's, there's hungers that, that when man gives himself over to and doesn't manage his hunger. He takes his life in a direction that God doesn't want our hunger to go. And we create outcomes that aren't God's plan for our life. How you manage your hunger will determine the direction and the quality of your life. <laughs> Managing your hunger brings health. Let's not be mad at hunger, because hunger's good. Hunger, I, I went over that a minute ago, right? So let's just not be mad at hunger. Hunger's good, but, but managing your hunger is the key. Managing it brings health. Yeah. Eating, not just eating, but eating the right stuff. Yeah. It creates freedom. Yeah. When you manage your hunger, you're free. You're free of those appetites. You're, you're able to navigate your way from what doesn't do you well to what does do you well. You can have an appetite for, for increase and for, like we, we're talking about Financial Peace University. I just hope you have a hunger like to do well financially. I hope you have a hunger to leave an inheritance for your children. I hope you have a hunger to have more than enough and to live a full, abundant life. I hope you're hungry to not be bound up by the misuse and the mismanaging of an appetite and what it'll do to you. I hope you have this hunger and then you manage this hunger and, and you stay within the realm of, of managing it well because managing your hunger is what will give you 
the best life possible this side of heaven. Generosity, legacy, joy, all comes from managing our hungers. So what Bono says is he writes a dichotomy. That's what artists do a lot of times. They don't hand you their answer. You talk to a lot of artists, they, 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 whether they draw a picture, whether they write a, a, a script, whether they write a song, they lay out the dilemma. That's what Bono did. So we hear it, and first time we hear it, it's like, wait, you're a Christian. How do you like talk about you still haven't found what you're… Because he's creating an honest, real conversation that a lot of Christians don't want to have. It feels like an insult to Christ if you get honest about your humanity. And I want to help you get free. I want to help you understand right here this weekend there is nothing wrong with you having human hunger. God knows and created you with human hunger. And I'm also going to say, don't go on some campaign to start getting upset when you hear somebody say, all I need is Jesus. Don't go rebuke them or correct them or say, my pastor said that's right. Don't do that. You know, it's the heart and, you know, is we're, we talking about in some context, I mean, really? Like, if you are dying tomorrow, all you really do need is Jesus. So, you know, there's some good context for it, but I want you to understand and get it in and, and accept the idea that you are right now, you, let, let me go to my fourth point and then I'll go on. My fourth point is being hungry beyond this life causes us to pursue life with eternal purpose. So here's what I started to say. You are not a human being who has spiritual experiences. You are a spiritual being having a human experience. So it's really okay when you say this side of heaven, there's really nothing that ultimately will satisfy the longing, the hunger, Ecclesiastes 3 and 11 says, He has made everything beautiful and appropriate in its time. He has also planted eternity. Look at that. It's the Amplified Version. It kind of expounds on it as he has planted a sense of divine purpose in the human heart, a mysterious longing which nothing under the sun can satisfy except God. (laughs) Yet, yet, man cannot find, he cannot comprehend, what God has done, his overall plan. I'm still running. I'm still running. Bono saying, the cross, the shame's lifted, but I'm still here going. Still getting up in the morning, rolling out of the bed, putting my feet on the ground, I'm still going because I really can't comprehend God's overall big plan from the beginning to the end. I really can't. The most common question that humans have is, why am I here? Like, what on earth am I, am I here for? That's, that's the most common question, and if you haven't yet started to ask yourself that, you will. There'll be a point in a time maybe where you'll wonder 
about that. And I want to just say God created us with that longing. He, 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 has, he put eternity in our hearts. Did you see that line in Ecclesiastes 3? He has put eternity in our hearts. Why? So that we would pursue Him. So that we would pursue His purpose in our lives. That we would live on purpose, with purpose, and for purpose. There's nothing better than that in life. There's nothing more rewarding in this life than to live with eternity in our hearts. You were meant to do life in community with God's people as part of God's family, doing the works that God planned in advance for us to do. That's what Ephesians chapter 2, 10 explains. It says, we're God's handiwork, and we're created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. I, lo I love the rendering of that. I love the way that, that writing goes, because he basically makes it clear that, that when you were born, there was already something that you were meant to do. Like it was already in advance of your arrival. It's not like God's like going, what, what could I find for her to do? It's like you were born with something already as an assignment and assignments that would be part of your life, your purpose. And there's nothing better for man, there's nothing better for woman that through all, throughout all of our life, that we would live with a sense of God's purpose, with a sense of eternity in our heart. So as I raise my children, I'm thinking of God's plan. I'm thinking of what God wants. When I go to the office and I'm in that environment at work, I'm thinking, God put me here for a reason. When I'm going through a situation in my life that's really difficult to go through, I'm thinking, what is it that God wants to be glorified, or how does He want to receive glory out of this scenario that I'm walking through right now? What does that mean? Well, that just means I'm living with that eternity in my heart. I mess up, I do something wrong, I get back on my feet again, and then how does God want me to now help other people through my pain, through my struggle? What am I doing? I'm living with a sense of eternity in my heart. And when we take, when we take and we understand that it's not, it's not, we are not humans who every once in a while on weekends or whatever walk in and have a spiritual experience, but we are spiritual eternal beings who are just right now for a while wearing something called human flesh. When you understand that, it starts changing your perspective toward the longings, toward the hunger, toward what you're going through that right now you're like, why do I have to want what I'm not supposed to have? The Apostle Paul wrote about those things within his own self. He just really honest about it. He said, you know, the things that, that I, I want are the things that I shouldn't have, and the things I don't want are the things that are going to help me. And it's just kind of like you when you change from eating pizza to broccoli. 
Like it's just sort of the dynamics, and you can question, and you can go through all of that, or you can say, you know, this is very temporary, and my job is to manage my hunger through this brief time to the very best of my ability and live with a sense of eternity in my heart. There's things God planned in advance for you to do, to be light in the darkness, to bring hope to hope the hopeless, to live for something bigger. Are you hearing me? Live for something bigger than yourself, something more lasting than, than this moment that you're in right now. I want to go back, and I'm almost done, but I want to go back and finish that Ecclesiastes 3 because I just read up through verse 11, and I want you to look at verse 12 because he says, I know that there's nothing better for them than to rejoice, do good as long as they live, and also that every man would eat and drink and see and enjoy the good of all his labor. It is the gift of God. Well, Pastor Kevin, why did you want to read that? Because I wanted you to understand that he put eternity in your heart so that you would always long for him that you would pursue his purpose and his plan, that it would be at the center of everything that you do, but not to the point where you would live miserably. In fact, he wants you to have the best life possible this side of heaven. And, and, and the writer says, I know that when it comes to God, like he really wants us to enjoy our life and to rejoice in the things that are good as long as we live, and also that every man would eat and drink and see and enjoy the good of all of his life. That's like a gift. So I want to encourage all of you this weekend. Let's understand that we're having a human experience and that there are things about us that we're always going to be hungry. Like you're going to leave great environments where it's going to, you're going to be like, spiritual like highs and you're gonna literally walk away and you won't you, you'll be shocked at a thought that goes through your mind or a temptation that you deal with and you'll you, you'll have a tendency to like oh this is bad I'm bad you're human you're human I said you're human don't get down on yourself don't don't get discouraged. It doesn't make you any less of a child of God. You are a spiritual being having a human experience. Your goal is to manage your hunger in such a way that you optimize your time. That's really what God wants. From the very beginning, whenever God gave Ten Commandments, you know why He gave Ten Commandments? Not to just make some rules so that people would be miserable. He gave the Ten Commandments so that we could have best life possible this side of heaven. That's what God wants. <laughs> and then let's just, let's just live with hope and let's live with expectation. And let's live with a sense of something beyond this world. Does that sound good? Let, let's manage human hunger and experience God's best for us now and in eternity. That sound good? Let's know. Come on, let's just know in our heart that this world can give us joy, but the greatest joy here is living with a sense of hope and expectation of my future life. That I am good with God, God is good with me, I'm having a human experience. He understands my human experience, but, but the joy comes from knowing that I am a child of God now and for eternity, and nothing can change that. Amen? Come on, let's give the Lord a great big hand. I want to pray with you before I walk away from the platform tonight, I want to pray with people who, and I just felt like this weekend when I finished the message, I wanted to take the time to pray with people who might be at a place in your life where you've been discouraged, 
and felt like you couldn't measure up or live God's plan and purpose for your life. And this little talk has brought you maybe to terms with the idea that God's really for you. He gets you. He gets you. He understands you. That it's not about you being perfect. It's just about He came to give you life. Came to give you more abundant life. And when you trust Him, He helps you. When you put your confidence and keep it in Him, He'll strengthen you. When you get His Word in your heart, you hang out with His people, you'll get better. But maybe somebody's discouraged. Maybe somebody has felt like in some way, shape, or form that I just can't quite measure up. And I want to give you a chance, whether it's your first time to connect with God or it's an opportunity for you to reconnect with God, I want to invite you if you would, to join us in a simple prayer. We call prayer of salvation or the prayer of new beginnings. And if you would, I'm gonna ask everybody in the room to just pray with us, but I'm gonna invite a man, a woman, a young person, I don't know, somebody, I know you're here and I know God's dealing with your heart. I know you're not here by accident. And I really know in my, in my own mind, my own spirit that there are people who God plans for you to actually leave here different than you came. So if you're ready, I want to invite you to join me in this prayer. Just say out loud with me. Say, Lord Jesus, welcome to my world. I invite you into my heart and into my life. I thank you for the privilege of life, of breath, of love, of all that you've given me. And now I give my life and my future back to you. Be the leader. Be the Lord of my life, I pray. In Jesus' name. If you prayed that prayer and you got a brand new beginning in your life, I'm going to ask you to be bold enough to just raise your hand. Let us celebrate with you uh, around the room. Good. People are raising their hands. Why don't we make some noise? God bless you. God bless you. Come on. Anybody else? Raise your hand up. God bless you. Welcome to the family.